Hi guys, welcome to this session of Microsoft Excel. What we're going to look at today are the 10 most common functions or the functions that I teach the most often to people. And we're going to start off with some simple ones and then build up across the bottom here to some a few more functions that are slightly more complicated but nothing too taxing I hope. So first off, the very very basic one, the auto sum function used to add up a list. So you can type this, you can select this from the FX button but I tend to go for the auto sum button up here on the ribbon click the auto sum button grabs the list check that it's grabbed the correct list b3 to b10 which is correct click the tick and then you can pull that across like so and then do the same thing across the rows check b3 to m3 tick and then pull it down now you've got hashes, lots of hashes, so rather than doing them one at a time, highlight the whole sheet, double click, fixes that little problem. So the next one is the average function. So I'll just put average at the bottom here. Now there are several places you can get the average function. I tend to go again over on the home tab on the little drop down arrow you've got average. This time it's not grabbing the correct list so you do need to intervene, just select the area that you want. B3 to B10, take the formula, pull it along. Now the sum if function. So slightly more involved. First of all, I've highlighted column C and called it location. That means I don't have to worry about dollar signs because anything going into column C, even below this list I've got on the left there, all the way down to the bottom of the sheet, anything going into that column will be picked up. And I've also called column E students. So the sum if function is going to look down location and it's going to look for CNA retailers. And every time it finds CNA retailers, it will add up the students. So the formula is equals sum if, open the bracket, it's asking for the range. The range I've called location. So I can just start typing location. Then it wants a comma. What's the criteria? So you could put the criteria in quotes, but that's not a very flexible way to do it because you'd have to keep changing that. So have a little table like this where you can click on a cell reference, then another comma, and then you start typing the list where your figures are, which in this case is students. And then you close the bracket, click the tick, comes back with 27, the graph picks that up. And because you've used name ranges, the only part of this formula that's dynamic is the G1. So when I pull that across, the name ranges stay static, but G1 moves to H1 and I1 and J1 and K1, like so. And the graph picks that up. The next one is a count function. Two examples of this. To count number, count numbers. So if I just highlight this list for a second, uh, not with blue, that's not great, yellow. If I want to count how many items are in that list, again, on the auto sum button drop down, count numbers. It says count numbers, but actually just puts the word count in there. Again, I just need to intervene and select the list I want. So that counts the numbers in this list. There are eight items. However, if I pull that one back, so it's counting the text, comes up with zero because you can't actually use count the count function on its own to count text but what you can use is the count a function so if i type in there equals count a select the same list list tick that comes up with eight but when i pull it back it still works because it counts whether there's anything in the cell including numbers the only time it won't count is if it's blank so if I delete a few of these, you can see that that's now picking that up. But if I put numbers in, it counts both numbers and text. So it's slightly more flexible, the count a function, than the just simple count numbers or count function. Count if is the next one. Um, similar to sum if, except we're going to count how many items there are. Now, I love this function. So let's have a quick look. Um, I've got a list of passes and fails and pending. So I'll just put pending over there as my little table. And you can see that I tend to have things in little tables at the top. I need to know, or I want to know how many passes there are and how many 
fields and how many pendings there are. Now, if I just call this column status, press enter, that means if this grows, it will still pick it up, and I'll show you that in a second. Then I'm going to type equals count if, open bracket. The range is status, which I've just named, comma. The criteria, first of all, is the passes. Close the bracket on that. Click the tick. There are three passes in this list. And again, because I've used the name range status, I don't need to worry about dollar signs. I can just pull that across and it counts the others. And because I named the whole column, if I do that, it just counts them and it will always count them. I love that function. Next one is the if statement. Now in this example, I have named this list sales, this list bonus, and I'm going to use an if statement to work out um, whether a person gets a bonus or not. So the statement is going to look at these figures and basically say anything over 21,000 will get a 10% bonus. Equals if. So the logical test is sales. I've named it sales. So if sales is greater than 21,000, comma, if it's true, look at sales and times it by 10%. You can type it like that. Comma, if it's false, zero, then close the bracket. Tick the formula, and then it fills it down for you. Now, the total column is just going to add those two up. So sales plus bonus. Tick, and it fills it in for you. And then if you want to use an if statement and show text, you do it like this. So equals if again. So the test is if bonus equals zero, which means I haven't got a bonus. The text needs to go in quotes and you want it to say more effort needed. Close the quotes. If I have got a bonus, you want it to say, well done. Close the quotes, close the bracket, click the tick, pulls it down. You can use different words, obviously, whatever you want. Next one is another if statement. This time, though, it's combined with an and statement. So this example, I want this to say letter to MD or standard letter here, depending on whether this is an account type A and that they have spent more than £2,000. So this is how this one goes. So it's equals if, open bracket, and then and, open bracket. So with the and, you get lots of logical tests, more than one. So with an if statement, you just get one logical test, unless you do a, a nested if. But in this case, you can have multiple logical tests, which all need to be true for, it, for, for the if statement to do the true bit. So basically... If B2 equals A and comma, D2 is greater than 2000, that's the tests, two tests, close the and bracket. Now I want a comma for the if. If that's true, in quotes again, letter to MD. If it's false, comma, open quotes, standard letter, close quotes, close bracket, click the tick, pull it down. So you can see there, standard letter, letter to MD, type A, greater than 2000. Next one is a VLOOKUP. So in this example, this cell I've called the input code. This table is called product code. And I've, I have conditional formatting selecting yellow, depending on which code you select at the top. So if I put that back to ABC, and I'm going to type in here, equals VLOOKUP. It wants to look up value. I've called the input code. You could type something in quotes there if you wanted. Comma. 
the table I've called product code. So I'm just going to start typing product code and then I can double click on this comma, which column? Column A, code, column B, description, column C, cost, so two, comma, true or false? False is what I want, but I know from other functions that you can put a zero there, so I'm going to put a zero there, which is the same as false. Close the bracket, click the tick, A, B, C, nuts, if I change that to something else, just gaskets. Now, because again, because I've used names, I don't need to worry about dollar signs. I just need to pull that across. The only thing I have to do is change this second VLOOKUP to look at column three and not two, because it's a price we want now. And you just need to format that into pounds. And there you go, VLOOKUP. The next one is the match function. So the match function looks down a list to see if um, the figure or the item is in a second list. So in this example, I want to look at this figure, one, two, three, four, five, to check whether it's in this list. If it is in the list, it will come back with a number, the position of the list. If it's not in the list, it will come back and say not applicable. So here we go, equals match, open the bracket. So basically looking at C, uh, B2, comma at last week i've called that list the blue list last week and comma comma and there you go look zero exact match close bracket not there so one two three four five is not in this list and if i pull that down so that one there 1212 is in the second position of this list and that one is in the fifth position and you can see how it works. And then you could put a, another formula on that and an if statement to say new number or old number. It's up to you. These functions sometimes go together and you get an end product. Now the last one is the index function, which is a very common function as well. So in this example, I've named this area data and I've put on the screen two scroller bars so I can um, use these arrows use these arrows to increase or decrease the row number or the column number. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Change the color on that one to a bit lighter color so you can see it better. So put it back down to one so you can see the answer. So the match fun uh, the index function is equals index open bracket. It needs to know what the array is, the data. So that I've called that data. Then it wants the row number, which is the yellow one, comma, and a column number. So it can give you an intersection of the data. When I tick that, it should come back with 12 because one and one is 12. So that's what it's picking up. There, color it yellow. If I change this, row three, it's come to 18, it's gone down to 18. Column two, it's gone across to 28. So this is a, a very useful function when you've got this type of lists. It allows you to move backward, back and forward across the table, whereas a VLOOKUP, you would only be able to look from the first column. This one allows you to move backward and forward. Now to create these two little babies, you need your developer tab and from the developer tab which you need to tick on if you haven't got it on in file options quickly show you file options customize ribbon tick that's what you need to do on there you've got this little insert form controls and the one i've picked is this one a spinner and i basically just drew the spinner clicked away then right clicked on that and assigned, assigned a cell reference where I want the number to appear. So this is going to increment by one. The cell reference would be there. And then I click OK. Then I click away. And then I start increasing the number. So that's all these are doing. Giving me the intersections for this index function. So that's the end of this very quick overview of 10 of the most common functions that I teach in my classes. I hope you've enjoyed that and I will see you soon.
Thank you for your time.